Colin Smith here from Photoshop Cafe. This week I'm going to take a picture of a car that I shot in a parking lot and I'm going to make it look like it's riding down the highway with the wheels spinning and everything. It's great to see you this week. So what I'm going to do is we're going to take a picture of a car that I shot in a parking lot. It's not moving. And then what we're going to do is we're going to add some motion to it. We're going to make it look like it's moving down the road so you can't see the parking lot in the background. And also we're going to spin the wheels and make it look kind of interesting. By the way, check out my Instagram. It's at Photoshop Cafe where I'm posting a new picture every single day. Anyway, let's jump into this Photoshop tutorial and get started. All right, here's a picture of a car that I shot in a parking lot. It's actually an Albertsons parking lot here. And what we want to do is we want to make it look like it's driving down the freeway. So it's going to take a little bit of work to do here, but what we're going to do is we're going to start by selecting the car. Then we're going to drop it onto a new layer. Then we're going to blur the whole background and then drop it on again and then get the wheel spinning. And essentially that's what we need to do. All right. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to select the car. And a quick way to do that is using the quick selection tool. So let's go up under here and you'll see a magic wand. Don't grab the tragic wand, grab the quick selection, much better tool. And I'm just going to make it a little bigger. It just works like a brush. And all I'm going to do now is I'm just going to paint onto my image just quickly. And we're going to make a selection with it. And just kind of going around there, looking awesome. Okay, I went a little bit over. That's all right. What we're going to do is just go over here. Maybe you use a smaller brush for a little bit more detail. And we're just going to select the areas that we can. And in the areas we went over, we just hit the Alt key or the Option key and just paint these back. So here we go. This is a great tool. Man, I could have used this a lot years ago. <laughs> Saves a ton of time. So we're just going to go in there, drag that. Great. Got a little over on the wheel. That's okay. Don't worry about this too much because it's just going to be dark. You're not really going to see it much. So let's grab up here. So here's a way to check the selection to see if it's any good or not is we're going to grab the quick mask tool. So there's a little Q key here. Actually, let me just hit D to reset foreground background colors. And then we're going to click there or hit Q. And we can see, all right, we've missed a little bit at the front here. And we've got a big mess up here. Okay, so let's see what we can do here. So let's hit the Q, goes back to a selection. Let's clean this up a little bit. And hit the option key to clean it up. All right, and this mess up here, let's undo this. Let's hit the option key and just kind of try to clean it up a little bit there. Uh, a bit more, clean it up there. And once again, we can check it by hitting Q. Looking a lot better and Q to go back. Awesome. All right, so now we're going to clean this up. What we want to do is go to our refine edge. So a lot of the time I use a quick selection brush and the refine edge is the quickest way to cut out a lot of things. Now for a really accurate selection across the top here, you might have wanted to use curves. Let's see what it looks like. We may go back and end up using them yet. So let's have a look. So what we're gonna do is turn on Smart Radius and we're gonna show radius here. And what we're looking for is a thin edge around there. Now let's turn the smoothing everything down to zero. All four of those should be at zero. And we're just gonna play around with this radius. We want a real thin radius there. There we go. So how this works is for hard edges, we want a thin radius and for soft edges, we want a thick radius. And the reason for that is the area outside gets tossed, the stuff in the middle gets kept, and then where that line is is where it decides. So the smaller the deciding zone is, the harder that edge is going to be. All right, so let's have a look. How's that going to look on white? Uh, we need to show turn off show radius. Yeah, it's still a little rough there. And how's that going to look on black? Still a little rough as well. Let's go to the white where it actually, in my opinion, looks worse, which is good because we want the one that shows the floors so we can see uh, what we're doing when we're cleaning it up. Okay, so we can try a couple of things. One of them, I could try and push this contrast a little bit. It's not going to do much without a feather though. So let's try smoothing. Okay, I'm just moving that smoothing up a little bit. And it's doing a reasonable job. And I'm just going to touch a feather, just a tiny little bit. And then we can push that contrast and try and clean up some of those edges. So notice these edges are looking a lot better here. They're looking nice and clean, but this one here is a mess. So we're going to do this one separately. So we've got a new layer with a layer mask. That's what we're going to do. And if you turn on remember settings, 
it'll come back to these same settings last time. So I'm gonna turn that off so it'll be zeroed out next time I use it and click OK. Awesome, so there's our background and there's our layer on the top. So we already know it's a little bit rough. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna zoom in a little bit and I'm just using the space bar to move this over. And we can see these edges need to be cleaned up. So I'm going to actually show you how to do this with the pen tool. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my pen tool here. And I just want to get a nice smooth edge here. So I'm just going to start from there. And I'm just going to drag this one out to here. And then out here, it doesn't really matter. Okay, so one of the things I did here is I went to a shape. I really didn't want a shape. I wanted a path. So let's just delete that. And we're going to try this again, this time with a path. And this time we're going to click and I'm going to drag out here and this is going to create a curve. There we go. And I'm just going to go up here, fill that out. And now I just want to clean this up. So what I'm going to do is go down to the pen and you'll see we've got different options here. So we can add points and we can use the pen. But the other thing we can do here too is we can use a path or direct selection. So I'm going to grab the selection here and use this just to kind of clean up this curve a little bit. It looks like this other one, the handle's a bit long. There we go. We need to shorten that handle and see how that'll just smoothen that curve in like that. So just going there, just trying to get this nice clean. Now, doing a path like this is a little bit more work. But the thing about using a path is it's the sharpest, cleanest selection you're possibly going to get inside of Photoshop because this is a vector. This is going to give a super clean edge around here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the path. I'm going to click on it to turn on the selection. So everything inside this area now is selected. So that means if I go to my layer and I go to my mask and I paint with black, everything in this area now is going to be erased. Make sure our opacity is up to 100%. And I'm just going to go around. Oops. I need to inverse this selection. My apologies. Command Shift I. So that inverses it. So now we go over here and I'm painting with black and everything outside there. Look at that. It's just erasing it. So that's giving me a super sharp selection. I'm going to inverse it again. So that's select inverse. So we go back up under here and use select inverse. And uh, which is exactly the same I did here with command shift I, control shift I on Windows. And now we've selected everything else. So let's go to white for the foreground color. And I'm just going to paint in here just to make sure everything's filled in right up to that edge. And now I'm going to hit Control D to turn it off. And notice we've got this nice, sharp, crisp edge there now. All right. So that's essentially how you would cut this out. So a lot of times, you know, if I was doing a commercial job, I probably would do most of this car with the, with the pen tool doing the paths because it's going to give me a super clean edge. But for the sake of time, I think it's going to be good enough for what we want to do here. All right. So what we're going to do now is we're going to blur the background. We're going to keep this one in place. And so with this one there, notice I've hidden it now. Well, actually, I'm showing that layer on top. You can't see it because the background there is in exactly the same spot. But now I'm going to grab the Move tool. And now we're going to blur it. So we're going to choose Filter Blur. Grab a Motion Blur. And then with a Motion Blur here, we can kind of just blur the background until you don't really know what's going on anymore. So if you look at it now, we can kind of see that we've got the background blurred. And we see the ghosting of the car, which is actually OK. It's actually quite desired in this case. So I'm just going to click OK. And I'm going to grab my car here. And I'm going to move it forward. So I'm going to move it right to the forward of that ghosting. So now this ghosting of the car actually looks like it's trailing behind the car to create you know, kind of a motion blur behind it. Now, there are things we could do to make this a little bit more accurate. And in fact, why don't we do that? Let's grab this tool, tool here. And what we want to do is we just kind of make this blur kind of blend in a little bit. So I'm going to grab a black brush here and make sure we have got a soft edge with this brush. I'm going to grab B for brush or click the brush and give it a soft edge. And now what you can do is you can literally just go and just paint on this edge here and just kind of blend it in a little bit. See that? And if you want to make it look like that motion blur is following through like that, you can do that. And just kind of soften that edge down a little bit. Yeah, it might be a little much, um, but you, you get the general idea. And we could kind of do that and make it kind of blend in. 
I don't like what happened on the top there. Let me undo that one a few times. But I do kind of like what's happening down here. So let's just kind of blend that in. All right, so we've kind of got the motion blur is kind of happening behind it a little bit now. All right, so we're most of the way there. Now, there's a couple of things we need to be concerned about. One of them here is this window. Notice that the background there, it's not uh, looking very accurate. You can actually see the old uh, background, same through there and there. Also, there's no driver. I mean, we could put a driver in there. In fact, I'd like to put a dog in just for fun. But there's a couple of ways we could do this. And let me talk about these couple of ways of doing it. Okay, so I'm going to give you two options. We're going to grab the quick select tool again. And then with the quick select, I want to make sure I select this area in here. Okay, so we've got that window. I'm going to hit the option key and just take back that mirror. Didn't need to go all the way there. Uh, just kind of go in a little bit. And I want to get that. That's fine. That, that's okay like that. So one of the things you could do with this selection active. I'll show you what I would do. I'm going to create a new layer. And then what you could do is actually just grab the brush tool. And then we're going to sample a color by hitting Alt or the option and grabbing the eyedropper. So one of the things you could do, and you'll see it a lot on car commercials, is just black out the windows. And you'll literally see this done a lot. Because most of the cars you see, especially like TV ads and stuff, those are 3D cars. They're not actually real cars. They look real, but they're not. And um, so I'm going to show you this is one way. Probably the cheats way of doing it, but it's, it's quick and easy. And I didn't completely black it out, notice. And you could go in with a smaller brush here and, you know, clean up these little edges in here, right? So that's kind of like one way of doing it. And, uh, and that would be perfectly acceptable. So that's one way of doing it. Okay, I'm going to show you another way of doing it. Let's make these selections active again. I'm just going to grab this tool. And I'm just going to select in here. And I'm going to hit the Alt key or the Option key, not grabbing that mirror. Whoops. Keep getting a little carried away there. That mirror gets the better of me. All right, and there's a couple of things we could do with this selection. Hang on. Let me zoom in on it. Make it a bit bigger. There we go. And I should just make this smaller. Makes it easier to make that selection. There we go. And you would grab in here too. Um, I really didn't want to spend like a ton of time on this. In fact, why don't I just not do that right now? Um, I'm going to show you how I can do it here. And then you could go and do it in there and there. And to be honest with this, a lot of the time I would actually, I'll show you how I would do it. I would grab a quick mask in this case, and I would just grab a brush and I would just paint this in. Sometimes it's the quickest way to get stuff like this. Just so you know. All right. So I do the same here and I would do the same there. But let's hit the quick mask and go back. So here's what we're going to do. We need to paint this out, but we don't want it to look completely painted out. Because if I was to just erase that, like let me select here and just fill this with black. Notice it looks like there's no glass in the window. It's just, it's too much. So I'm just going to undo that. And let me go back here. All right, so there we are. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint with black, but I'm going to drop the opacity down a lot. So I'm going to grab that mask there, and I'm going to drop the opacity down a little bit. And with the brush, what you would do is you just paint this out. And as we're doing that, we're allowing more of the background to show through. See that? And it's still allowing a little color there from the car. If you go too far, just hit it, hit an X and go back with the white and paint some of it back. So we get a little bit of it showing. And then what we're going to do is just go onto the actual layer itself and then choose filter blur, add a motion blur and see that we can blur in that background and then just control D. And you can see how it looks a lot more natural. So you could do that for the back, etc. So that's essentially how you would do that. Or black out the windows. Or do a little combination of both and just darken the windows a little bit. And you could just put a silhouette in there. You wouldn't have to bother dropping a driver in, in this case. So it's up to you. All right, so the next thing we want to do, though, is we want to make these wheels spin. And I'm going to show you two different ways of spinning these wheels. Uh, we're going to start with the first one, which works on every version of Photoshop since you know, since Photoshop 2.5, maybe earlier. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to draw a marquee selection. 
So one of the things you might have found about this, trying to get exactly over a circle can be hard, but it's easy. What we do is we draw the circle and then grab the space bar and we can move this around and place it where you want. So just move this around and using the space bar to position it. It's actually a lot easier than you would think. I remember when I first learned that, I was so happy because I'd really struggled with it. And the other thing you can do too is if you actually use a selection tool, you can nudge that selection with the arrow keys on the keyboard to get it ex precise. Just make sure the selection tool is selected and not the move tool. Because if you do the move tool, you're actually going to move pixels and it'll mess things up. Don't want that. All right, so with the layer selected, we're going to put this thing into motion. So we're going to go under Filter Blur, and we're going to choose the Radial Blur. Now, this is what I'm saying. This is what we do in every version of Photoshop that's been around for a while. Let's take it up to about 25, choose Spin, click OK, and there we go. We've got the wheel spinning. Now, I'm going to show you another way of doing it on Photoshop CC. Works for the newer version. OK, so what we're going to do with this back wheel we're going to go up under filter and we're going to go down to blur gallery and we're going to use the spin blur. And with spin blur selected, we're just going to drag it over to where the wheel is. I'm going to pull that inside a little bit and drop this down. And the reason I'm doing that is because this way I can make this oblong or an oval because it's not an exact circle in case you didn't notice. And I can just kind of move that around. And we can even go there, see how that we can even rotate it around, which is really nice and easy to work with. And let's pull these out to make sure the blur goes all the way to the edge. And now we can spin it really fast, or we can spin it slower just by simply moving that. Isn't that neat? All right, so we can do that using the blur gallery. So I'm just going to click OK, and there we go, we've applied our blur. So we've got our car essentially from, you know, standing still in a parking lot to motion with spinning wheels so i hope you enjoyed that don't forget to subscribe hey guys thanks for watching i really hope you enjoyed this and picked up a couple of interesting things so add a like add a comment and don't forget to subscribe because i'm adding new videos all the time in fact i'm starting to do a couple of vlogs um let me know if you like these if you like them i'll continue to do them and i'll do more if you don't then i'll stop and i'll just continue to do photoshop tutorials so anyway thanks a lot and i'll see you at the cafe